Hi guys. I know it's not 11 o'clock yet, but I thought this one might take a little bit while, it might take a little bit. Um, so I thought I'm just going to go ahead and start, hop on, see who all uh, can come and watch with me. Um, I think I'm going to just start with what all it took to make them. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. This is my very first one that I had made. The Pennywise clown from the movie It. I'm not really satisfied with his hair, but it was just starting out. Now, it took me four, four of these dolls to actually get him how I really like him. Because I tried several different sizes of the hair and several different materials. So it's okay because I know all of the ones that I don't really fully like. I know somebody else will. And I mean, they don't look bad. But the very last one that I have done, the fourth one, is totally amazing. Hi, Teresa. So, this is not my original idea either. Um, I'm on a few pages on Facebook. And, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, act, I have the next three days off. I have today and the next two days off. So, I, I didn't really go to bed early last night. But I was able to sleep in just a little bit this morning. And I thought, you know what? I'm putting on makeup. I'm kind of fluffing out my hair. So... I feel good today, so it's it's going to be a good one. And I get to do a live, so it's always a good day when I get to do those and I have time. If I have time tomorrow, I think I might do those bathtubs too because that was another thing. I end up going to Dollar Tree. I have a lot of people asking me for the bathtub gnomes. So when I went to Dollar Tree yesterday, I found these tubs. And I mean, they're bigger than the other ones that I had done. And they also have like a little shower attachment and a spot where it can it can sit. But I'll do that in, a, in another tutorial because once I started making these, I fell in love. And, and I thought, nope, this is the one I'm going to do today. Because I had a lot of people, I noticed a lot of people were asking on the other sites, you know, as to how to do it. And one of the gals... Um, I want to say it was on a Dollar Tree crafting site. She shared her template, which is this here. And so I saved it to my phone. But I didn't know what size that she printed it out on. So with as small as these dolls are, I thought, well, I'm going to start and I'll print that out as a 4 by 6 so when I did that, that's how I ended up with this hair, with the faux fur. It was done on the 4x6. And then I also used felt. And this is what I got with that 4x6. And this one I just kind of messed up so he doesn't have a bald spot at all. But this was with that first printout. Then I ended up switching to a five by seven and it didn't it wasn't big enough either really so I went ahead and this one I printed out eight by ten and my phone is linked with my my printer and it just automatically has that so but the lady, the lady on the other page, she used a, a Christmas stocking. So I thought, okay, so that's kind of like a felt. So I thought I would try the felt. But I had red faux fur here. And I do like the faux fur way better. Now with the 8x10 that I printed out, I did the faux fur and I also did the felt so this is what the hair looks like with the felt with that eight by ten 
I mean, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't look bad at all. But with that 8x10, this looks amazing. This is the very last one that I did, and this is going to be the end result on <laughs> the rest of my gnomes. Or, I keep calling them gnomes. I'm, a, I'm addicted to gnomes. But, uh, this one is going to be how all the other ones are going to look for the Pennywise. Isn't that amazing looking with the faux fur? It looks way better than the felt. And I guess, I don't know if I would actually call that felt. I ended up buying, it was fleece, is what it was. And it was a, just a big roll, kind of like a blanket material. And that is what I was using. And I also used that on one of the balloons. So this balloon is that fleece. This balloon is a little sock. And then for my last one, I just cut out a balloon shape out of regular felt. And I like this one a lot better than the others. So this is how I'm going to end up doing it. And on my first one, I used a dowel rod for the for the stick of the balloon, and I just glued it to the hand. But as I got to going, my brain kept going, and I had an idea. I wanted to stick through the hand because the hand, this hand is closed like he's grasping it, and I want it to look like he's holding that. So, oh, you bet, Teresa. So this is the pattern that that lady shared. I am so glad she shared it, too, because I would have had no clue how to start these. But I wanted to make them because I have my farmer's market table um, tomorrow in the afternoon. And I want to be able to put some of these out there with Halloween coming. You know, I think they would really look cute on the table. I even thought I could maybe make one of the dolls look like a gnome with a beard. So I will be buying more dolls. But um, when I printed this out on the 8x10, I'm going to go ahead and measure measure this for you to give you a little bit of dimensions so where it says on the front it is going to be four inches long so that long piece there that's going to be four inches now from that curve that's two and a half inches and then on the one that says back that one's three and a half, three and a half inches long there. And that curve goes down about two inches. Now I will say too, this part, this teardrop for the middle, when I used the faux fur, I only cut one I because it's such long uh, fur. If it would have been shorter, I might have done more than one. I would have done the two. But with the long fur, it really does not need those two pieces. Hi, Robin. And that teardrop, that is just shy of two inches. I don't know if you guys can like screenshot that during the the video so you have it but when I saved it on my phone from where she posted it on on the uh, the page I, I just saved it to my phone and then when I went into the printer on my phone I had it print an 8 by 10 so that's the size I got I don't know exactly what her dimensions and what size she might have just done it on the, on the fly, you know. Hi, Bailey. But I'm also going to show you a tip uh, for that hand to hold that, um, 
the stick for the uh, balloon. And I ended up switching to, um, I didn't end up use. I ended up switching because I didn't like the size of the dowel rod. So I used bamboo skewers and I cut them about five inches long. And then I ended up with a little stick like this. At first I thought, well, maybe I should paint it. And I thought, I think I'm overthinking it. So I'm just going to leave it the wood um so I'm not I'm not gonna paint the stick at all but what I did and I have several I have several of the dolls in different different painting stages um hoping that this video won't take too long you know I normally do two hours you know up to two hours but I mean if you can't watch the whole thing you know you can always watch it later and then fast forward to the sections that you want. So this one I just have his head painted and everything. And then this one I got a little bit further. And then this one, on all the other ones, I painted over the eyes. And then I just drew with marker. Um, I ended up using these markers. I got them at Walmart. There was a set of eight, I believe. It's art skills. And they're double-sided. It has a small tip on this side and a fat tip on the other. I just got them at Walmart. I work there, so that's where I get a lot of my supplies. There in Dollar Tree and Dollar General. But one of them, I painted quite a bit other than the bottom because I wanted, I wanted to be able to do quite a bit. And I probably won't finish all of these in this um, live. Now, the white, the white paint I used is the Waverly chalk paint just because the chalk paint covers a little bit better now it is really thick so I added just a smidge of water to thin it down a little bit now since I added that water um, I'm able to get into all the little creases and nooks and crannies in in this doll um, but Another thing, since I watered it down, I did have to go over some areas more than once after it dried, just because it thins it out just slightly. Once I got all of the painting done, then I ended up spraying it with this gloss finish, and it's just an acrylic sealer, just because, as I noticed, this first one, he hasn't been sprayed with anything. I'll probably end up keeping him. Just, just, I don't, I don't know. I like to keep something out of a lot of my, my stuff. And this one, I'm pretty sure the paint is going to peel off of him. Because I did not do this here. So all the other ones that I'm, that I'm going to sell, they will have that coating on there. So it won't flake off as much. It'll, it'll seal them pretty good. But I'm going to show you that tip as well. Oh, and for the face, the red, the first one, this one here, I just used those markers. I used the red marker on him. And I mean, he looks okay. He's not that bad. But when I used the red paint, the red paint looks way better. So... I just used the apple barrel and I got it at Walmart. Bailey, I'm just doing the live of, um, I'm making the Pennywise from the movie It out of these little dollies that I got from Dollar Tree. This is the finished, he turns out so cute. I love that faux fur. It really adds to it. And in a lot of my lives, I always say, you know, if it doesn't turn out how you like it, you know, try not to get frustrated. I know that's really hard to do, but that's how you learn and that's how your craft grows. So I have four of them pretty much done. And I'm going to show you. Some of them, I, I just don't like how they look, but I know that they're going to sell. 
just because it does look like Pennywise and they're they're not as bad as they could be <laughs> like with him I really I don't like his hair because it didn't go very far but this is the this is the first printout that I did, so I didn't really know what size I needed. But, I mean, he does look cute. You can tell who he is. And then the next one that I did <clears throat> was this one. And I thought, well, I'm going to use that fleece because um, that's what that, that lady used. Now, this one is when I had that idea I want it to go through the hand and not on top of the closed fist now what I did for him and I'll show you the others later all that I did was I used the tip of my glue gun it's really small and I just held it there and it pokes a hole right through there well, I want it to go down through the other side, and on one of them, I did a hole on the way bottom. That's when it's going to cover, it's going to cover the face. That's this one here. When he sits, it covers it. So I didn't want, I didn't want it like that. So then I adjusted, and the next one I did, instead of going... On the bottom, I went right underneath his thumb. So right underneath his thumb, I'm going to create another hole with the tip of my glue gun. That way, when I insert my stick, it'll go through that top. And then I can poke it through there and no matter where I have it set that balloon is not going to be in front of his face like this one this one I mean you have it up it smacks his hair you have it down it doesn't look like it's a good balloon but I don't like the placement on this one and it was a learning experience through all of these but they will sell, even though I don't care for a couple of them. I probably will ad lib and add a few other little touches just to perk them up a little bit. Like with this one, I don't really care for his hair, but it's the smaller pattern. So I might add a little bit more to it just, just to kind of perk him up a little bit. So it's fixable. Try not to stress because nine chances out of ten, it's fixable. Now this is the one with the big, the big pattern. And I mean, he turned out really cute. But I still have my favorite, my fourth one that I had done. And three of them, I did end up spraying that stuff, that uh, sealer. On there so those those are pretty much ready to sell and then I also played around with the balloon to see what I like best and how I ended up doing that was I took took my funnel it's just a really big funnel I don't know the size of it and I used that as my template and made a circle on my my fleece and the sock just to make a round circle then I filled it with polyfill and put it around once I gathered it I put it around the top of this and then I used a zip tie to tie it shut now on my last one I didn't use any of that and it was so much easier all that I used was the felt I cut two pieces with the same shape out put a little bit of polyfill in there and glued the edges together with this in there and I like that one 
way better than the circle ones. But like I said, those I know will sell just because they are really cute. And this guy here probably will get more hair added to him. <laughs> kind of looks silly from the back, but, but yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. I don't know. And they're still adjustable as well. Their hands and arms, they still move. So I'm going to go ahead and start walking us through the stages. Oh, and on one of these, I did not paint over the eyes just because I wanted to see if he'd look a little bit more creepy. Now, in order to not paint his eyes, I had to use around his eyes a little smaller paintbrush and it just took way too long. I ended up nixing that idea. I, I want it to be a little bit more simple. I don't want it to be, I don't really care for a whole lot of painting. I don't have the patience for that. If you want to do that, I mean, there is no wrong way of doing this. If you want it to look really, really scary, don't paint the eyeballs. This one I'm leaving this way just because each one that I have, I want it to have its own little character, even though it's the same, it's the same character from a show, but I want it to have its own little pizzazz to it. So I didn't want two of them looking identical or the same. And with this craft, I don't think that's possible because you're not always going to have the same lines. Hi, Jessica. And my pom-poms that I ended up getting, I ran out of the smaller ones. So all that I have now are the bigger pom-poms and I've been cutting them down to fit. So just use what you have around the house and it should be good. Just in the, around the neck, I ended up using little scrunchy hair ties. These were in a three, three scrunchy pack. So you had a white one, a pink one, and a purple one. And then there were some that had a white, a gray, and a blue. And so I grabbed, a, I had eight dolls, so I grabbed eight of those. And I figured the colorful scrunchies I could use for other crafts or whatever. But I just wanted the white ones for this. And in that post, there was another lady that had made these and she colored the body silver. So it looked like he was wearing an outfit. I thought about doing that as well. It ended up getting way too intricate for me and too detailed to where I want to be able to set these on my table tomorrow. So I don't want to put tons and tons and tons of time into it. If, if I had more time later on, I probably will try that one, but I really don't like to paint. So this one here is kind of out of my comfort zone. And I did notice when I started spraying um, that sealer, I mean, you in the dolls, you can see a little bit of the, the pink skin through it. So I probably should have done a little bit more coats on there, let them dry maybe a little bit longer. I don't know, but I mean, they still have a lot of character. And it, some of them kind of look like the paint is chipping, like it's an older, older doll. So I just, I chalk it up to, that just adds character. And I can't wait to see how everybody reacts to them at the market. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So I added my white chalk paint in there. And I added a little bit of water to um, water it down just a little bit so it wasn't so thick. And it has been sitting, so it has been thickening up just slightly. But I just took a bigger brush, went through all the creases that I could find. And 
and I did find that it takes probably about two coats and I'm not very um, neat when it comes to painting so I end up with paint all over my hands and that's why I set down my uh, newspaper there to catch some if like if I drip any or whatever but I recommend painting all the white that you're wanting white first get him where where you want him to look you know and then once he's done and and dried and you have that second coat and cover up all the little pieces that you're you're wanting covered then you can move on to the next step and I wanted to try to get several of them in different stages so I, I wouldn't take so long on my live today I think we're gonna go for a drive or go somewhere after after my live is done so yeah you just cover it all over filling in all the creases And then once you get, I'm just going to set him aside and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next, the next step. Once you get that part done, off to the side too. and he's all painted how you want him. I'm going to remove this stick here so I have more, more room and space. Then I'm going to add the touch the little red part on his face and his this one here I don't have to do the eyes because I left them the way it is but I am gonna put that little black eyeliner around the outer edge so I'm just using my marker that I got from Walmart and I mean he's still adjustable so if the arms and everything are in your way, just go ahead and lay them down. And this is the hard part. You gotta have a little steady hand. I can't even do this with my makeup, so. And the top lash, that's a little bit easier to do than the bottom. But you just do the best you can and it's going to look great. So it kind of looks a little choppy, but it does outline the eyes just a little bit better. And then when I do his face, I kind of leave him down that way a bit. And all I did was I kind of shook up my paint. And you can use the red marker if you want. I had done that with, uh, with the other one, the very first one that I did, and he turned out okay. But with this apple barrel paint, I find that it's just a little bit brighter, and I like the color better than that marker. And once he's all dry, you can grab his head and it's not going to peel the paint or anything. So what I start with first is that nose. And I just draw a little circle.
thought I could do it without my glasses, but glasses are needed. So just a little dot or a circle on his nose. And then once you get that size the way you want it, you're just going to do like a little, I don't even know what to call it, like a little wing or a notch off to the side. I hope you can tell what all I did, but it's just a circle with like a little, a little mark on each side of his nose. And then I move on to the mouth. And all that I'm doing is tracing what is already there for the mouth with the little paintbrush. And my brush is like really, really tiny. And with the brushes, it ends up, I end up getting the package that has all different sizes. So, and then I'm really bad about cleaning all my, all my, um, brushes out so nine chances out of ten I just toss them out grab another package uh, once in a while I'm really good and I'll I'll remember to do it but most of the time I just replace them just because I can get them you know cheaper so then what I do for the eyes I just make that That little mark and then on the underside I'm gonna go down and then around the cheek this is the scary part for me because like I said I don't paint but they've been turning out so well so I should just let my confidence flow, right? <laughs> they turn out really cute. And the lady, the lady on, uh, that Facebook page I don't know if it was her original idea or if she had seen it somewhere else hi Kelly but I'm glad she shared it because I really wanted to try it and kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit Because this is not something that I would normally do because it involves a specific detail of painting. And I'm not that, I don't feel confident enough with my painting skills. I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, you know who he is, right? And he does look a little creepier with the regular eyes than the painted ones. But the painted ones, I don't know, they're just easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did the eyes with the marker that is painted. I'm gonna grab this guy here. 
I always start with that black. And I'm going to move his feet. Okay, so I have the black part done, outlined it, and then I'm just taking the blue, and I'm going to put a circle where the eye would go. And to me, this one's a little bit easier because I don't have to, I can just cover up when I paint the face. I don't have to go all the way around and be a little bit more precise. You know, this one I can just slap on that paint and move on to the next step. And all I did was I put a little black dot in the center. So then there's the eyes that I just did with marker. To me, that's a little bit better because I didn't have to go around the eyes. But you can do whichever one you want. There's no wrong way of doing it. And then I'll go ahead and Sure do turn out cute. Oh, and I don't know, does anybody else do that? If you're not going to use a whole lot of paint, you just use what's in the top of your cap. This is a little bit more intricate than I like, too. But at least I haven't messed up too bad, I guess. So, every once in a while I brush off my tip to kind of keep the bristles where I want them. This one is a little bit more messy, but I can fix that with a little bit of white paint. So I'm going to show you. I'm not the best at painting, but he's still going to look really cute. Alright, so then, now that I've shown you how to do the face, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the, the hair. 
because right now this one here is nice and dry and if you want you can put the scrunchie on now well no because after you get done with all the paint then you spray it with that that finish I almost forgot that step so for now I'm just gonna go ahead and spray him in, in my house normally I would take him outside but I'm gonna spray his his face mainly because that's where I want to do his hair and I'm just doing a very light very light coat and I do have my fans going so it is good, but I would do this outside because it's a little messy. Just make sure to get all of them. There we go. And then we'll let him dry just a little bit more. And I'll, while he's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the face on this one. Once his head's slightly dry, then I'll go ahead and glue his hair in place. And we'll also cut that faux fur. Yeah, if I had more patience, I would definitely leave the eyes untouched because it does look a little bit more creepy. then while he's still drying I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some some fur and I'm just folding this up because there's a wet spot there and I don't want that to get stuck on my fur there we go so I just cut some little strips. These are like leftovers, but I have a... I end up getting my fur off of Amazon. And the filling that I use for the balloon, I ended up getting a pillow from Dollar Tree, and I'm just using the stuffing from it. Okay. And this one here kind of goes up to a point. I'm going to use that to my advantage. Use all the fur I possibly can. I very seldom ever throw away my scraps. Just because if I need a little itty bitty piece for something, I'll have it. So, see how this fur is going that way? And I cut it to where the round part's there. I'm actually going to want that to go the other way. So, all that I'm going to do is switch it. I should have cut it the other way, and that would have saved me from having to do that step. 
Okay, so there's the hair for the middle. And this is the 8 by 10 one. And make sure to keep like this uh, rounded part. That's going to go around here. This part is. It's going to go around here. So you're wanting your fur to go upwards. So you'll want to remember that when you are cutting your fur. And when I use my scissors, you can use a knife if you want. All that I'm doing is cutting the backing. I'm not cutting the fur itself. That way I still get that long sheet. And you could pin down the pattern if you want. I haven't been. This piece here. Oh, and also the lady on the Facebook post, instead of a felt or a stuffed balloon she used a Christmas ornament like a little red Christmas bulb whatever works whatever you have around the house I had felt I don't I couldn't find any Christmas bulbs or anything so I used what I got what I have here all right so This hair, I tell ya, I'm gonna have to buy more because I want to get some green one, some green fur, because I also want to make a Grinch. So, okay, so he is dry on his head. You can also do several coats of it if you want. I just do a very light coating on there. He should be good. They end up looking amazing. So for the placement, oh, my glue gun is not uh, hot. There we go. Now the light's on. So we'll just give it a second for that to heat up a little bit more. So what do you think of them so far? I can't 
get over how adorable they look. Now this, this one piece that says it's the front, with as long as my fur is, I kind of part that down the center and bring it off to the side. Because that middle piece, that's going to go over, that's going to go over this piece. So I kind of part it down the center. And I'll show you here in a second when my glue gun shouldn't take it too long. And all of my pieces I'm keeping in a baggie. I have two different sizes over on this side. It's just a good way to keep it separate to where you won't lose any of your pieces. Then I hang it on a clipboard on the wall. I might have to get a new glue gun. My glue gun's not working for me. Hmm. One second here. Oh, I think I have one down here. That I can use. this one but this one's not gonna work for me oh it wasn't plugged in all the way hot helps if it's plugged in I was gonna say my glue gun normally works pretty darn good I'm gonna plug, oh, I can't plug this one in the other side. I'll plug it in over here. One second. That might be too far. There we go. We'll see which one which one heats up quickest. There we go. Yeah, once I go, once I plugged it the rest of the way in, see how my glue gun works. Right. So then the placement of this one, you want it kind of where the spiral of his hair is. You're going to want that there and then bring it down by the ears. So what I mean by that is where it has like these little creases so it kind of looks like he's got hair right where that spiral is right there you're gonna want that to go all the way to the ear I mean if you wanted you could keep him like that I mean he still looks creepy And then with this piece, you're going to want the glue down here to start right where that curve is. I'm going to face him at me. I'm 
And then with that, you're going to go to about where the hairline starts. And then that will reach over to his ears. So right around the hairline. Keeping that part. And then you're also going to have these little, you're going to see that, those flaps. I glue those flaps down. Now, I don't know if that other gal did just because she used that felt or fleece. So I'm going to glue down these flaps. glue gun because that one is not wanting to there we go it's not wanting to stay or maybe I need to clean it off I'll investigate it later so make sure you have that parted and now you'll see that he has a bald spot on the top And he's got all this messy, messy clown hair. Now this middle piece, the teardrop, you want that fur to be going towards the point. And that point is going to go towards the back here. And then the rounded part's going to go up here. Oh, Robin, thank you. This is not my pattern. Uh... I just saw what a gal did on on uh, one of the Facebook pages, and I wanted to create it. Thank goodness she posted a uh, a pattern because it would have taken me a lot longer. So with this piece, you want it towards that center of his forehead, and then it's going to go up and over that piece kind of like a mohawk right in that center where you parted it and I kind of widen that a little bit <laughs> he looks so cute this Faux fur really does make the project. I love how he how he looks. Now I'm also going to add his his little ruffle. I mean, you could have done that before. Oh, looky there! Look how he looks good that way too. If you wanted to just keep it tucked under under that ruffle he looks good that way as well or you can keep him with the crazy hair he looks good both ways maybe on this one I'll keep his hair like that And then at the market, I'll see what everybody thinks. But I'm still going to leave his hair here. Just to add a little bit of character. Hopefully the wind won't kick up at the market. It'll mess up his hair. Might have to use a little bit of hairspray. All right, then I'm going to grab some felt for that balloon. Oops, I'm going to move him back. And I would 
I'll show you how I made this little balloon. on my table. So all I'm going to do is fold my my felt and I'm going to cut out a basic balloon shape. With this, I could make a template, but I'm just going to wing it. This is how I did it before. And I think when you, when you just go for it, I think they turn out so much better. And it might not be like a perfect balloon shape, but to a clown, really there isn't a perfect balloon shape because they can make balloons into any shape. All right, so I just made a little balloon. Out of, and it's two pieces. Then I'm gonna take some of the batting from that little pillow there. What I'm going to do is glue the edges. I'm going to leave a big enough opening to where I can stuff it. So I'll let that sit for just a second. Teresa, I like it down like this too. Now the the middle piece, it doesn't get caught in that um, ruffle. So if you wanted it to stay, I would definitely recommend a little bit of hairspray or something to keep it in place. Okay, so I let that sit a little bit. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of this polyfill from that pillow into my balloon. And I think a lot of people would probably turn it right side out to where you don't have like that little crease, but I like it this way. So that's how it's staying. It kind of makes it my own, but there's no wrong way of doing it. And if you choose to, to do it that way, it'll work out for you as well. Now I'm going to glue these edges a little bit, and there's still going to be that little opening for my, my skewer to go in there. And then I'm going to glue down that skewer. right in the middle there and then I'm also going to glue the edges together so there's my balloon Nothing fancy, and I mean, you can tie a little ribbon or a string around the balloon so it has like a little frilly as well, 
there's no wrong way of doing it. And then where I melted that hole in the top and right underneath his thumb, that is where this is going to sit. And it's going to look like he's actually holding this balloon now. because of where I created those holes. It turns out way better than my first one. And I just used what I had on hand. Didn't even think of the skewer until later. He turns out so cute. Then you can get him to where he sits nice. They turn out adorable, don't they? Really, they're simple. Yes, wire would be good too. Kind of jealous of the other one and wanting him to look a little bit more presentable as well. Do you find with your crafts that you end up, if they have long hair, you end up playing with their hair? I find that I do that quite a bit. And on these dolls, one hand is open and then the other one is grasping something. So it's, I think you can do it either way, but if you do it in the open one, you're probably just going to have to glue it to it. But it's kind of a no-brainer to put it on the one that he's grasping. And they turn out so cute. I mean, you can have him fluffed up a little bit, let the inner hairstylist come out, you can have him crazy hair, set the mood you want for him. I cannot wait till these go on the market tomorrow on my table. I also have a new, um, a new tray for my table to present some of the stuff and I think these will probably go on my little cake platter that I purchased. I have like a wooden, it's kind of like a cake plate, but it's wooden and it has these white beads around the outer edge and I think these would look really cute on that. And then of course I have those cars and trucks with the gnomes in it. Those will work really good in the two-tiered tray that I ended up getting just yesterday. So, so with these, this is the one I started with. Kind of looks like a hot mess, but he is a psycho clown, so it works. I can't watch the movies because I have nightmares, but even if it doesn't turn out quite like how you envision it, I envisioned it like this. And this is what I ended up with at first. Don't give up. Just, if it's too frustrating, take a break. Come back to it later. Or brainstorm with somebody. Get some ideas, you know. when Like during the lives, I get tons of ideas from you guys as well. So it kind of helps uh, the craft grow. But either way, they don't look horrible even if it doesn't turn out 100% how you like it. I mean, they you can still tell who they are. The This one was the first one. This was the second one that I did. And as you can tell, they progress. That was the third one. This was the fourth one. And now this one. I mean, they really... 
as you go, they get easier and easier and easier. And I don't think any of these are completely horrible. I do like the faux fur hair way better than, than the fleece and the felt for the hair. I will say that. And I'll probably use, use that from, from now on. But the ones that I did use that fleece and felt, I'm sure they will sell. Just because they'll know who it is and it still works. So, I think here in a bit I'm going to get off of here. Uh, go ahead and do that there. Um, and then later I'll finish painting the other three and doll up the other ones that I don't fully care for, but they'll work. So I'll add more hair and, and stuff to those. I'm so glad that you guys were able to log on and let me know if you make any of these. Now they also, on that page, they had ones that had, uh, they made one look like Beetlejuice, Mike Myers, um, Oh, the guy from Saw with the scrolls. I can't remember his name, but they made him. Uh, they made tons of them. So these dolls are probably going to end up selling out at the Dollar Trees just because Halloween's coming. And now that people know that they can make this sort of stuff, they're going to be sold out. Just like those little white bathtubs. <laughs> Oh, Teresa, you're so welcome. I noticed on the page, um, several people had asked, you know, that lady to do a tutorial. I don't know if she's gonna or not, but I thought, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do one and show the progression of how I did. So, yes, somebody else wanted a Freddy Krueger. I have not seen one yet, but that would turn out so amazing. Um... I don't know how we do the hat or or the hand. I don't know. That would be a harder one for me. I probably would not do it just because that would be a more intricate one. And I would have OCD with it because I would really want it to turn out a specific way. This one is pretty forgivable, you know, because he's a clown. So if he looks a little weird, clowns look weird. So, it works either way with this one, but Freddy Krueger has that specific look. So, that one, I'm interested to see, you know, if somebody posts posts that and uh, how it turns out. At maybe, maybe some point when I have, like, a, a lot of time or, I don't know. Maybe an idea will come to me with it, and maybe I'll do one eventually, but right now, I don't see myself doing a Freddy Krueger one. Um, oh, they also did a Jason one. That one looked pretty simple, but like I said, there was one that had a silver outfit, and I didn't want to have to paint several different colors. I liked the white one better. So I'm just going to stick with this one, see how they go. I'm probably going to end up buying more dolls because I could see <laughs> I could see me making more of these next. Uh... Ooh, Heat Miser. That would be a good one, too. Good thinking, Kelly. I'll have I'll see what I can do. I do have orange fur so I could do his hair. I'm going to have to get more dolls. <laughs> we are going for a drive later, so maybe it'll all end up at another Dollar Tree. Who knows? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all the ones that I have done. And then I'm going to go ahead and log off. The balloons kind of get in the way, don't they? <laughs> Oops, oops. Here we go. I have that other one done, but he needs a balloon yet. That's all he needs is a balloon. Well, 
long-haired snowman. Hmm. Now, I have been thinking of doing a snowman gnome, but I haven't got him put together or anything. And that's just a cone. This is one of those um, hats from St. Patty's Day. And then I want to put sneakers, black sneakers, on there. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. I have three days, so we'll see. I might end up doing another live either tomorrow, maybe even Thursday. Who knows? But I'll keep you guys posted. Keep checking back on my page. And thank you guys so, so much for sticking with me on this. I think I'm going to log off and we're going to go somewhere just to get out and about. So, you guys have a, I keep wanting to say have a great weekend, but it's only Tuesday. Uh, and if you make any of these, send me a picture. Let me see what you come up with. And then I will also send pic, or show pictures of um, my table tomorrow at uh, the farmer's market. And maybe I'll even do a little video of my table. So, I will talk to you guys later, and thanks again, and thanks for all the kind words. I really do appreciate you guys so much. Um, I never would have thought that this would have gotten to where it is right now. There's, I love doing this sort of thing. So, I will talk to you guys later, and you guys have a great week. Bye.